Okay, ironically, I've had a few requests lately for the software Lithoflex, um, and so I thought I'd better do a video before it gets out of my brain, because I use it for my PhD, but I haven't used it since. And so just to explain what Lithoflex does, you can see here, it's a software package that allows you to calculate the gravity field or tensor field starting from a global gravity model. And this is just relevant with the ghost gravity data that has been collected over the last few years. In addition, the software contains routines for forward and inverse gravity modeling and isostatic calculations. It allows also spherical gra gravity calculations using the section gravity tesseroids. Um, and the tesseroid routines are de uh, were developed by so Leonardo Oida. I'm pronouncing that wrong, um, from Brazil. It was in collaboration with the university in Italy. And so it's a really great um, very simple program, just click on the buttons, um, easy to use. A disclaimer now, um, I contacted the original person who I, I got the software from and they just said to me, look, it is no longer being developed, um, but it is still very robust because it uses the Parker Oldenburg algorithm to calcula calculate the thickness of an anomalous density layer. Those are their own words. Um, but for those of you who want something that's a, a bit more open source, open code that you can play around with, there is another software um, that my, the colleague of mine is using. It's called Tesseroids. And he just says it, it uses Python and Fatiando, and it has a Jupyter Notebook um, link to it. So there's a lot more coding involved. So, so for those of you that are brave and really want to dig in, um, Tesseroids, here is Oh, I'm just dragging it across. Here's the website. I'll put the link below also. Um, you can see it's the same gentleman who's developing it and um, this Tesseroids program. And I'm told that the main difference is, let me just find it here. Um, it allows you to use vertical gravity data at an arbitrary height. So it fix it's a set height. Where, uh, check out Leonardo's website. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll post the link below. But to say that research is still happening with Lithosflex, I'll send this link over here. Um, so people are still using Lithosflex. So here, high resolution MOHO model for Greenland um, using gravity data. Okay, so that said, let's get started. Um, I've loaded the software on a Google Drive file, which I'll share the link below. You can see over here is the folder. And just to speak you through it, you would go into software and it's a zip file that you download. In there is also the data, but just in case you don't need the data, I mean, don't need the software and you just need the data, this is the data file we're going to be working with. It's the ghost uh, data file. Disclaimer now, it's one of the older versions. I think one of the horizontal gravity gradients was incorrect in this one. But this is the one with this, that this tutorial was done for. But the vertical gravity gradients is fine. In terms of this tutorial folder, I haven't really looked at it again, but I just, I know I downloaded a whole bunch of papers and I think it was there was an online tutorial quite a while back. I don't know if this website's still working, but check that out if you want a bit more background reading. Um, but yeah, and then the last thing is this PDF. This is taken from a gravity gradients course that I attended. It was run by Jorg Ebbing. I'm just thinking if the names are written here at the top and Carla Breitenberg. Okay, so you can see Jorg Ebbing at the time, I think, was at um, the Norwegian Geological Survey. He's now at the University of Kiel and does a lot with gravity gradients. And then Carla's um, at the, what is written here somewhere, somewhere in Italy. Yeah, University of Trista. And so this is a course that they ran. And this is the, there's a whole bunch of other PDFs, but I'm not going to include it because it was a paying course. And um, so this is just the tutorial they used on how to um, calculate stuff in this flex. And so that's why I'm using it just so you can um, have it as a reference. And so the first step over here, um, once you've unzipped the software, you literally just run on double click on the exe file and this window on the right hand side will open up here. Um, so scope of this exercise, use spherical harmonics expansions of the gravity potential and calculate the relevant fields, reduce or do data from known structures. Um, but let's do it a bit more practically so it doesn't sound so daunting. Um, okay, so we're going to compute the gravity fields from spherical harmonic expansion. And what does that mean? Um, we're literally going to take the ghost gravity data over here. This is what the window is going to look like that we're going to work with. We're going to define the spherical harmonic degrees that we want to work with. 
and we're going to set out the coordinates that we want to actually extract from the ghost gravity data because this is the whole world. We want to extract just this grid over here. We define our grid spacing and we need to give it um, what type of earth shape are we using and the reason for this is because we are ultimately down here going to calculate the gravity anomaly um, from this data and the vertical gravity I think it is, well, I'll check later. And all of this we're doing on a spherical Earth. That's when we use the word tesseroids. And so that's why we need to know what shape of the Earth we are using. I just wanted to give you a picture of what a tesseroid looks like. Uh, I've got it over here, let me drag it across. And you can see why it's a lot more relevant. Using a tesseroid fits the shape of the Earth it takes, and just got to take that into account when you're calculating um, gravity for an area and we said for we are doing ours for this area here and you can see we're going to do between west and east 5 to 42 degrees and south and north um, minus 40 to minus 20 so we need to take into account the spherical nature of the earth while doing this okay so I'm going to go page down um, we're going to calculate the gravity field and the vertical gravity gradient for Southern Africa. Um, it's really extracting it from the data. And then we're going to view it in Surfer. You can also export it in GXF format, which is in Geosoft. So let's get started. We're going to take the gravity, gravity data and get the gravity anomaly data from it and the first vertical derivative. I wanted to put in context of um, what are we actually doing. And so what we are going to do in this video, <coughs> sorry, we're going to take the collected gravity that was collected by the satellite. We're going to then, um, in the next video, calculate the gravity due to the topography. And we're going to minus that from the collected gravity to ultimately give us a bouquet gravity value. So this is what we're going to get out, this first column is what we're going to get out of Lithosflex in this video. We're going to extract the collected gravity. Um, so we're going to calculate the gravity anomaly and GZ sorry gzz and then the next videos will do the rest and so you can see here the type of values we're going to be expecting today we're going to focus on gz and gzz you can see here that gxx and gxy should be different but they look the same and that's why i said a few minutes ago that there's something wrong with this data set with regards to gxx and gyy and so that's why mainly for my study i just used these two and i didn't really worry about that if you want to read about these two horizontal components you want to download the new data you probably want to download the new data anyway and the problem will just be getting into the right format to get into Lithosflex. I'll take a look at it and see if I can figure it out. And so this is where we are in this step over here, just getting the calculated gravity out. And you can see there's this high over Lesotho and high up here going into Namibia and a low over the coastline surrounding South Africa and similarly on the vertical derivative. So you've opened up Lithosflex. How you do this, you unzip the folder and then double click on the EXE file inside. So let's click um, on the gravity menu and go down here to EGM-08 synthesis. Now EGM-08 was the Earth gravity model, which I'm assuming was done in 2008. And so it was the forerunner to GOES. It consisted of satellite and ground gravity data. So I think it was a bit more high resolution than GOES, but it really is a bunch of stitched together um, surveys. So that's the, the joys of GOES, is it's all one data collection all at the same time, same height, so it's a bit more consistent. So let's click on this button here. And you can see here we're going to have to go and just load in, you can see the data file here at the moment is the EGM file, which is in your folder. Let's load in the GOES file. And so just to warn you here, this is one of the problems I ran into, and I think to save yourselves the trouble, just make a folder on your desktop called Lithofix and load it there. It does not like your data file being in too many folders. Like I had mine in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eleven. <laughs> so you can see I'm a bit of a obsessive folder maker. So let's rather go here, double click on your those, I mean click on those three dots, go to your desktop, and I've made a little flex folder here. And so you can see here's the data, this goes Tim R3. Um okay. And let me just get us to the right place in the PDF over here. So the degree of the model or the spherical harmonics, let's do 2 to 250. 
I can't give you more details about that. I have forgotten what I learned about spherical harmonics. Um, I will read up about it. Um, longitude, so input your grid area that you want to look at. Uh, we are in South Africa, so I'm going to look at a grid of 5 to 42 and minus 40 south to minus 20. Grid spacing, it says here, um, goes, you've got a, it has a resolution of 0 0.5 degrees. Um, you can see here it says the EGM is 0 0.05, so it's a bit more high risk because you've got some of those ground surveys in it. If you're going to click on here, you're going to click on this down arrow and you're going to click on sphere. Um, let's just move this out of the way. You can see in the tutorial it lists sphere. The other option is ellipsoid. I'll speak about that now, now when I talk about geodetic. Um, and then the calculation altitude, it says um, on this tutorial page here 250 kilometers further up it said zero so you really should write 250 kilometers 250,000 meters um, and you can see the units here is meters and that's because that is the height at which the satellite gravity data was collected and so if you go any lower than that like if you put in zero there's no way that you know what the values are at the Earth's surf surface because you are um, down continuing your data and you're adding artifacts into the data so you're not sure if what's there is real or if it's just been added in by the algorithm so you should really calculate at the height that it was collected and um, in the tutorial here it says 250 I think I calculated for my PhD at 255 I think that's a bit more accurate in the later years the satellite actually went down to like 225 or 230 I'm not sure but 250 is fine to calculate and then in the latitude base, click on geocentric. I'm not 100% sure, but what I think this is, geocentric is calculated relative to the center of the Earth. Geodetic is calculated relative to the Earth's surface. And so you should um, click, click here on center of the Earth. So just to warn you, um, you're welcome to go try it out yourself. If you choose sphere and geodetic, you don't get an answer. I'm sure there's some mathematical reason, um, but no grid gets exported. It says that it is, but nothing gets exported. So if you want a result when you're using the Earth shape, you have to use geocentric, so relative to the center of the Earth. You can click on ellipsoid, and then both of these uh, latitude bases will give you an outputted grid, but both of them are far more high resolution than if you calculate relative to the center of the Earth. And I'm sure that's because you're taking away a radius of a lot, 6,000 kilometers, you removing it and calculating it to the Earth's surface and that's why it's high resolution. I could be wrong with that, but that's my interpretation. So for this rewrite, you must click on sphere here, sphere, and you must click on geocentric, relative to the center of the Earth. So uh, yeah, so again, if you click geodetic here, you won't get anything out exported. And if you use ellipsoidal here and use either of these latitude bases, you get much more high resolution grids and they're not correct. And then next along we're going to call the gravity anomaly, array dimension, you can leave it a thousand. And then output file, look again on your desktop for that, oh sorry, for the lithoflex folder that you created. There we are. And I like to call things, ignore all of those test ones there, I like to give them the name of the input file so that you know what the heck you were using to create this file. And then you can put in some of the parameters, I mean I can, I'll, maybe we can say here yeah, height 250 kilometers and if you want to put in a 0 0.5 station spacing, your choice. Big thing is don't have spaces or use an underscore if you want to um, denote a space between two things. Also very important in your file uh, folders, don't have spaces in the names. Um, okay, click save and let's click execute. And it says calculated, um, do you want to return to the dialog? Yes. Just a warning, earlier when I was having problems with the sphere thing, uh, this window would still come up saying that it's given me a result, but it never actually gave me a file. So don't be fooled by this window. So click yes and then let's go find that file. Okay, so you can see it's showing up here. I'm just going to delete these with all my test runs. And let's see if it worked. So, uh, easiest thing is open up Surfer. Surfer, we go up here to Maps, New, Image Map. 
And we're going to open up the grid that we've just saved. And so I go down here. You can see I've got a lot when I was testing geodetic versus geocentric and sphere versus ellipsoid. So this is sphere and geocentric. And I click on open. And you can see it's open up here. So to change it from gray to color, you go right click, properties on the color bar. Click on the down arrow here and change from grayscale to rainbow and click OK. There we are. And now I want to see an outline of South Africa so I know where these anomalies are. So I go map, new, sorry, new base map. And then in the file you download it off of the internet, um, there's actually a, I think it's a BNA file. Let's drag it along. Uh, there's this Coast BNA file. I've put it on my desktop, but I just want to show you quickly where exactly it's situated. You'd have to go into the Lithoflex folder you downloaded. Um, go into Software. Uh, and then go into Lithoflex Spherical. And again, you're looking for this bin folder. And inside the bin folder, you can see here there's several different um, outlines. And we're going to use this Coast one. So if I double click on it, it loads on the screen. Now I want to overlay them on top of each other so I know that they are um, showing the same area. How you do that, you go in the left here to this object manager, you click on this base um, map here, drag it down just about images until you get this black triangle. If you've got the red circle with the line through it, it's not working, so black, sorry, not triangle, arrow, and let go. It moves it down and it perfectly overlays it. I'm going to click No here. And um, what you can do then is this background in the back, it's actually separated out and I can delete it. And so I can see here's the outline. I've got this positive anomaly. This is um, over the high topography around the Sutu. Positive goes up into Namibia and you've got this low here over the oceans. Um, and so the next step obviously is to do the vertical derivative. So we go back to Lithosflex over here. You make sure you've got your ghost data. Um, 250 degrees for your spherical harmonics. Make sure your coordinates are correct. Your grid spacing should be 0 0.5. Remember you're using sphere, you're using an altitude of 250 kilometers. Make sure you've got geocentric. And then instead of using gravity anomaly here, we're going to go down and click on TRR. And that is the vertical derivative. Please don't click on TR. So T double R. And let's choose the output here. I'm going to go back to my desktop. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to use the word sphere and geocentric so that I remember that I, those are the settings I use. And I'm going to write here TRR, click save, and then click execute. Takes a few s seconds, and then you click yes. And then let's go back here into uh, surf. I'm going to pause the video and follow all those steps again to load in the derivative. Okay, and you can see on the left here is the gravity anomaly, the anomaly, on the right here is the derivative, and yeah, you can see it's a lot more um, detailed, but a little bit more noisy. And I'm just going to end off showing you how to convert your grid so that you can open them up in Geosoft. You go to Grids, Grid Man, this dialog box opens, you go Open Grid, so you're going to choose the grid you want to convert to a Geosoft grid. So I'm going to use my sphere geocentric one, click open. You have to check for invalids, so numbers that aren't uh, proper numbers and you need to change, you need to um, change dummy values. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to check for invalids. I must admit, I don't know why these numbers minus 8 and 18 are invalids. Maybe somebody can write in and tell me. It could be the sheer fact that there's possibly all these no, I was going to say decimal places. Maybe it's too many decimal places. Um, I would assume you would click on clean values, but I know before, just by saying check for invalids is sufficient to sort the grid out. Um, you can say clean values. It takes those both values away. Um, the grid at the bottom as a GFZ, GXF, sorry, to be able to put into Geosoft. Um, I'm just going to go back here to Surfer. Um, grid format. I'm going to click on the file name and click on GGF. Oh, okay, it saved it. So wonderful. And I click save and 
click OK. And let's see if it opens up in Geosoft here. I've got a project that's already open. And you go on your grids here in Geosoft, you go Open Grids. And you can go down. Grid Exchange Format. I'm going to click here on Quick Access. Hopefully it's loaded it here. Yep, there it is, and click open. And there's your data in Geosoft. I just want to try quickly if we go here and we follow the same format and we don't clean the values or we don't say checkpoint values. Let's see what it does. So I'm choosing the sphere one again. Open. I'm not going to click on either of those two. I'm just going to say output grid and call it out grid and change it to GXF. I just want to see if it works as well or what error message you get. Okay, it's finished. Let's go back to Geosoft and we go right click open grids. Go over here. Scroll down. Okay, we're going to have to sorry, change it to exchange format. Uh -huh. There we are, grid exchange. Scroll down here. That's this out grid. Okay, so it worked as well. So you don't actually have to click on clean. But if you do pick up an error, um, I pretty much recall that I used to get some um, error values by not cleaning the grids. Sorry, I'm just trying to bring up this with this fix. So I really would recommend, um, first of all, just save it as a GXF. Don't use these checkpoint values and change dummy values. But if you start running into problems, then look here and you might even have to go clean values.